Hello. Ah, here we are. Right on time. Everyone's ready. Man, Everyone's uh, prepared. Every, I'm ready. I'm ready. Who's on? Who else is on? Uh, nobody. Uh, just me and you. Uh, I uh, am planning on calling Bobby Rogers in a few minutes. Uh, so I figured I'd let you uh, uh, get get any uh, business you want to take uh, uh, take care of beforehand uh, beforehand, and then we call him like in five or ten minutes. Uh, fif- fif- yeah. So, so the only business I had is <laughs> I've been thinking about this this all week. Uh, I told you I bought some new pants. Uh, <laughs> I I know I know that you uh, you've either bought well I know you bought new pants. I right. I know that that was going to be a podcast story, so you didn't really fill me in on that. So I'm excited to hear about that. I know also that you've been eating a lot of stuff on a uh, TikTok. So either you bought those snacks, or people have been sending you those snacks. So uh, I I don't know if that if pants are the only thing you've been buying. You it looked like you bought some shirts too. You got some like you had some what? Big Bird yellow thing you were wearing today on TikTok, and I was like, ooh, that's a bold choice. Uh, that I had never seen. Oh, no, I've had that. I bought clearance, clearance, baby. <laughs> clearance. Clearance, clearance. But no, so I, I was very – so when I talked to you, I had told you I bought shorts or, or some new pants, right? Yeah. yeah and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a little – I will tell you, I was a little – I was nervous. I was dis- – I, I, I didn't try them on. I'm a man. I don't try on my pants. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just bought a size and walked out of the store? Okay, I that's, went in. I looked. That's a real man move, by the way. That's like – well, okay, that's like, let me tell you, I, I walked in. The cast a predator kind of man move, you know? I walked in, and I said, there was like a lot of people in there, and I was very, the whole situation where? was just see me out. At Levi's, the Levi's store, and it's the at, at the outlet mall. So, you know, you get like a discount on stuff. So I was very nervous about this whole situation. So I said, I'm just going to buy, it was buy one, get one half off. I'm going to buy two pairs. They have, they have pick, a big and tall section at the outlet store? Well, <laughs> I'll get there. So <laughs> I uh, I was like, all right, I, I'm just going to do this. So I'm looking for – I said, okay, we're going to shoot for a 40, even though probably oh, a 42. My friend. So, well, let me tell you. So I said, you know what? Let me look. They don't have any 42s, nothing over a 40. <laughs> I mean they do not care about fat guys. Anything so, in the elastic section? <laughs> oh, hold on. Can, can you just <laughs> let me get to it? I'm having fun here, man. So I, I, I said, all right, I got to get a 40, so I'm going to go a 4032. So I, I get two pairs, 4032. I said, I'm not trying them on. I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying I can squeeze in. And in my head, I'm thinking, all right, I, I can squeeze in. I know I can squeeze in. By the way, but, by yeah. the way, for all of your new English fans, a 40-inch four, waist and a 32 inseam, which is the length inside right. from your crotch to, your, to the cuff. Right, yeah. So large people were those. Very large people, like me and Ben. Well, forty inch waist. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's starting to. Yeah. That's in the. That's, that's, uh, I'm part of the dog food in the bowl, so shut up. Uh, that was. So I, I, I said I don't want to try them on. I don't want to embarrass myself in in the in the place. And I said I'm going to try it on. I'm going to just. I'm not going to try it. On. I'm just going to put it. I'm going to wear it. And my first thought was, if I don't fit right, like if it doesn't fit, I can squeeze in because i squeezed into the other 40 right that's a good thought process right like oh. i had squeezed into a 40 before it should be no problem yeah but i covered that that that's like a okay. you stretched you stretched those pants all you were like a smaller size i wasn't thinking like that. got into I wasn't the 40 and then stretched those that fabric till it was probably a 44 inch waist right, but i wasn't thinking that so anyway i yeah, look yeah. and it says They've got, I mean, Levi's got 15, 20 different kinds like to choose from, and it was even in that size, it, huh? Right. Well, they different. You know, they got the fucking skinny jean, the slim, oh, yeah, the this, yeah. the that, the this, the deuce, the that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I see a section that says athletic, and I read the description because they all have descriptions, and the athletic description says uh, for guys with bigger thighs and butt oxes. So I go, that's me. That's me, right? Like, I miss, this is me. I miss I miss the the low rise uh, waist jeans that they used to have in like the nineties. Who ever wore those? I did because I that's where I gained all my weight was around my middle. So if they if uh, the pants didn't go if they if the low rise meant that they didn't go as high up to where I was wider, you know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So I just said, okay, athletic. I'm gonna that that describes me: bigger thighs, bigger ass. So I buy them, I wing it, right? Buy one, get one half off. 
Uh, and I, that was on Saturday. So here we are. Today is Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Yes. I've not touched them. I washed them and that was it. So today came the day I had to put on pants to go to work. Wait a minute. You, so I said, you, you, well, you wash them. So you can't, I re- wash. you can't return these. No, I, I Jesus. am so confident that I was going to fit into these Jesus Webb. that, right. And, and my thought was, if I don't fit into them, maybe it'll be motivation. To drop a couple pounds. Yeah, but right? you still don't have any pants. Yeah, I got one pair. I, I mean, I've been working with them for m- weeks now. So I can't wait till those explode on you. So I said, okay, I'm, I'm taking the chance here. Let's see what happens. So this morning I wake up. It's go time. I got to put the pants on, right? <laughs> uh, I, I I take a shower. I get out. I stare. I held them up. I stared at them. I looked at them. I, like, I was really like. I got to just do this. I got to put it on, you right? You must have been more nervous than a young Ben the day of his bar mitzvah. I was nervous. I was. And I, I was like, I was psyching myself out. I was panicking. Like, I mean, the whole deal, right? Like, yeah. I was, this was, this is like, this isn't going to end well. I don't know. What am I going to do? I got to wear the black pants I've been wearing every day for the last, you know, five, six weeks. So. I put them on and they fit over my thighs. I said, "Oh, okay." So we, we, I, I literally paused halfway and said, "Okay, all right, we're, this is not bad so far. It's not bad, right? We're good. We're <laughs> we good." That's the first of three stress tests. Right, right, right. <laughs> so now I'm like, "All right, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go all the way now, right? Like we gotta. This is it." So I, I pull them all the way up, and they fit. No. Do you want to know why? I realized athletic also meant the waist was uh, stretchy. Oh, like my uh, <laughs> like my Hagar slacks. Yeah. <laughs> so when I pulled them up and I put it, I go, wait a second. There's room here. Like, this is a 40 with room. Like, there's room to spare. That's dangerous. And I, you I, know, you know once... I give a tug and I go, oh, my God. There's stretchy top. Yeah, when I yeah. see, that's trouble, my friend, because – once I felt comfortable in those pants that I bought, I uh, right. it was like uh, just feed me anything at that wedding. I I and then I haven't stopped eating since then. Uh, yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, I was psyched. I was psyched. The stretchy pants. I'm good. I'm good. I wore them today. They were so comfortable that <laughs> throughout the day I was telling people new jeans, stretchy pants. I'm like, great. And they're like, oh, who gives a fuck? Why are you telling me? Were you, like, were you doing like lunges down the aisles? Yeah. I was like, look, I can bend down to pick up this paper. No issues. No grunting. And they're like, did you, no. the one guy's like, did you have issues before? I was like, I ripped him. I ripped him from, from nuts to asshole. And he's like, whoa, wow. I was like, look at these stretchy. I felt like, I felt like, uh, it was like a Seinfeld episode or like Larry. Like completely. I complete. This right. is, yes, this is, this is George slash Larry David. Right. Uh, f- doing like right. a, some strange. Doing lunges. Right. Some yeah. strange flex with his brand new. I did like a little sprint in the one aisle and the <laughs> guy at work was like, what was that? I was like, I was like flexible, flexible jeans, baby. <laughs> Athletic. <laughs> you're, so, yeah. You're, you're like, these are like borderline joggers, huh? And they, and they look, they're great. They're jeans, but they're Levi's and the top is stretchy. But uh, I'm excited. I bought two pairs. I bought a khaki pair and a jeans. So, yeah, yeah this you, is good. I mean, you really locked out. Like, you didn't even know when you bought. Right. When you no bought clue. those, uh, the description wasn't even, like, what no. you needed most. And it literally just said for bigger thighs and and. Uh, buttocks or something and i was like that's me yeah well we know we know why the the, the they stretch that's why they're for bigger thighs and buttocks. now the guy in the picture wearing them was like a jacked up like football player not not me at all so not even i really took a chance not even like a lineman like a like a no no this guy was like a running back or like a linebacker or something right. and i was like yeah yeah, so, so they fit. They were good. Let's they roll the were, dice. They... <laughs> you, yeah. you, you must have walked by a few Funhouse mirrors before you went in that store if you saw a picture <laughs> of a football player and said, yeah, that's uh, me. <laughs> I shallow held, my, how, shallow held myself. <laughs> yeah, the, somehow uh, put through the power of positive yeah. thinking, uh, brainwashed yeah. yourself. That, that, yeah, movie, so was, can't, that movie can't be made today, can it? No, can't. No, no, no. I'm surprised they even put it on TV if they, if they even do anymore. I well, unlike but, the cable, unlike the 
like the HBO channels and stuff. I don't see it on. Right. Right. I mean, but yeah, no, it was fantastic. So I just, I could not wait to tell you that my pants fit perfectly. That's like a, that's a very triumphant story. I was, I was more hoping for, uh, uh, the, you know, the bitterness of defeat kind of thing. Like, uh, I knew you were, I knew you were. Yeah. Lex for podcasting here. I mean, listen, I, I'm having such a hard time with, Trying not to eat everything in sight. You have a hard, you're having a hard time breathing. I, dude, <laughs> Let's be I, honest. I, I trotted up the stairs after checking the mail, and I felt like my heart was going to jump out of my chest. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I started working out yesterday. I, oh, I worked here, out. Here we go. I, I did, here I did four go. miles walking. Uh, oh, look, you're in go. trouble, pal. <laughs> what kind of? I'm tr- back, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. And you're now. I will say, like, like my, my, well, my, like. I ate yes. I had I had a smoothie. I had some yogurt, but I had chicken cutlet for dinner. Like I'm not gonna not I'm not full on board yet. But today for lunch, I go to lunch and with two guys, they each get a pepperoni and sausage pizza, like personal pizza. Yeah. I'm like you motherfuckers. I said no no no. I got salad with chicken and pecans and uh, cheese and some tomatoes. That's what I got, and it was fantastic with ranch dressing. Oh, I so. Didn't know. I was didn't know if they just you just sprinkled a little jizz on top of that gay salad of yours. Well, I, I, listen, but here's the thing: I it's just two days now. I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling good. I got on the scale today because in my head I go, oh boy. I lost weight already. I'm down, baby. I have not lost a fucking pound. I'm still two seventy. <laughs> oh well, at least you're down from two seven one point three or two seven two. I'm I'm two seventy point three. Oh my god! So you're so you're, yeah, you're down a pound, pound and a half from your. New like yeah, all time high. Your recent yeah. all time high. Um. Well, right. This is. I think this is a good. This is a good port point to call Bobby because right. This kind of relates, and I know you. You told me I have to call him this week, and you wouldn't tell me why. But something right, right. funny happened, and so uh, I assume it has to do with me or the podcast, if that's the case. So um, let me uh. Let me pull him up here, and Let's uh, pull him up, and see if I can handle the technical issues involved with merging a three-way call. Because uh, you no. know, it's, it's like it's, I get a little retarded sometimes. We can't even re- we can't even record a podcast, right? So. <laughs> Let me tell you, I I've gained so much we- weight that uh, it's it's hard for the finger to find the button. Uh, I'm just like uh, <laughs> my big fat fingers are. All right, here we go. Answers. Maybe not. Hello. Hey, Bobby. It's Ben. How you doing? Hey, pretty good. How are you? Let me merge you here with uh, Anthony into what we call a conference call. Are you there, Anthony? I'm here. Oh, very yeah. excited. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't answer the phone right away. I was ordering uh, Five Guys. Oh boy. And then, and then for dinner, I'm gonna have pizza later. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> 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 So, uh, so, uh, so wait, wait, wait. What yeah. you're saying is TK and four friends are coming over? <laughs> TK doesn't have four friends. Actually, I was just thinking of TK Stark because tomorrow is uh, 31 years since I had my first pro wrestling professional match. Oh, and that's wow. Actually, that's actually longer than TK Stark has been alive. Mm. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's, wow. These are sobering uh, facts that come in our later years here. Right. Yeah. I didn't realize it was 31 years till. Actually, a few months ago. Who was your first match? Um, it was a tag team match. It was me and uh, Falcon against wow. Mean Mike, Laria, and Les Adams. And the funny thing about the match is, Mean Mike totally treated me like I was like, like I was just like be, like I was lower than a jobber. He didn't sell uh, chops, <laughs> eye pokes. He didn't sell an eye poke. He call, he called for me to eye poke him in the in the match. So I poked him in the eyes like three students, uh, Roddy Piper style. And he and he puffed his chest out like Superman. He didn't even sell it. <laughs> he actually That's dislocated funny. my hip in that match too. Wow. With a, with a with a stiff clothesline. I, I can't on. believe Falcon was there then. Like Jesus. Yeah, he um he was he was there then. He was young. He was I think he's like a year older than me. He's not that not that much yeah. not that old. Yeah. But uh, he he turned out to be a real wackadoo. <laughs> a little bit. Um, 
No, he's beyond. He's he's blocked on Facebook, so I can't even see what he says. Oh. <laughs> well, so, I have lots of people. I should do name the people I've blocked on Facebook because they're they're not they're batshit crazy. Let's see who we have. We have Dow Jones. We have uh-huh. uh, Robert Pasco. That's uh, that's yeah. one's name. Yeah, from uh, Heartbreaker Express. Uh, there's so many of my blocked. I like how you pulled up the block list. I, think, no, he, I, don't even have, I think he pulled up in his head. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah I, don't, I didn't pull it up because I actually have like like 2,500 people blocked on Facebook. My, my aunt, I have my aunt blocked. <laughs> <laughs> I have my aunt blocked. My brother's blocked. <laughs> that's like that's like four times more people than I am friends with. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I actually, I actually blocked. Aunt, I actually blocked Janetti once, and then I oh. called him for days, blaming, telling him that he did it to me, and he was like, "I didn't do it." For like he was, he was like, "I so, remember that he did." I didn't do it. I said, "You blocked." I was like, "I didn't bastard. block you." I know. I just wanted that yeah. phone with you for a few days. Unbelievable. Well, I used to post shit on Facebook, like that he said, like racist or something that he said, and then he would call <laughs> me and say, did I, did I really say that? <laughs> no, you didn't. I made it up. I, those conversations I used to post about with him, none of that shit was real. Oh. Well, look, so here's I, – I told Ben that we had to have you on today because – a couple was a couple weeks ago. You ordered food for Ben, right? Like, what, what was it? A hundred dollars in food? It was, yeah, um, it was a bunch of. It was just a lot of food showed up on my door one day. Oh, the grocery, not yeah, not the pizza. The no, that was the how was the pizza? But the pizza right. was yeah, how was the the pizza was really good, and the wings. I didn't know they actually made sauce for the wings there. I thought they were yeah. all just dry, but uh, the I don't like coal fire. I don't like coal fire pizza, but um, you know, it's good. I the only. I told us, Anthony, the only flaw I have with their coal fire pizza is that when that when the bottom of the pizza hits your tongue, there's yeah. too much flour, that loose right. flour, and it's it's a little burnt because it's in that oven. Well, see, I could live with that, but I really don't like the name of the place. It's like such a oh. fucking piece of shit, faggot name. <laughs> God. Anthony's. Um, yeah, I've had, I've, had nothing, yeah. I've, had, I've had problems with his, with, his, uh, with his grocery delivery, too, by the way, but what, I'll tell you about that. Go on first, well, and I'll tell you. So, so okay, so I wanted you on today because me and you were talking the other day, and you said there was another grocery order you tried to make, but you I fucked did. up. Yeah, I did. That's oh. the story I wanted you to tell because Ben doesn't did. know this happened. Wait, wait, I so, did. Yeah. So I dodged a bullet. I was because I've been trying to get on a diet, and I had a hundred dollars <laughs> worth of like. I mean, it was food. It was ed- it wasn't it was, like all it was, garbage. It was good. It was good stuff that like, that like a teenager would like. So yeah, <laughs> it was it was like a parent stocking their kids' dorm room for right. two months of college. Yeah, that's the stuff. I'd like pop tarts and, and French bread pizza and bagels and salami and ravioli yep, and stuff yep. like that. Yeah, it was del- yeah. every fucking bite was delicious. But I, yeah, so I I must have put on another ten. Yeah, so you didn't know this, but I guess Anthony knows this. But I actually did it again um, a few days ago. Yeah, I, I use Walmart delivery because I, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and they don't have uh, they've shipped, and they have um, there's no Publix here, so they have like some they have Kroger's, which I don't like because it's like the Kroger's near me is like a is like a rundown Winn Dixie, if, if you can imagine that. Yeah. And then there's a, and there's a um, Azure or something like that, manure. I don't know the name of the place. There's another place. So I don't I don't use shipped, and I don't use Instacart. So I use Walmart delivery. So I did a Walmart delivery again, but I had your address saved and on my list. So I went to do it, but I sent it to my address. <laughs> so I got and I didn't know that oh, until I got a text. Until I got a text saying your order's out for delivery. And I said, Oh, cool. I said, I got a text I gotta text you to tell you it's on the way. And I looked at the tracking thing and I said, Wait a second, Worthington Hills, that's my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at it, see, but I put your address in, but somewhere along the way in the order it reverted back to me. So now I have all this all this shit here that I don't eat, <laughs> and um, I mean I, I am eating it because it's here. <laughs> right, exactly. But, That's what happened but, to me. I, I want to do it to myself. So then, well, it doesn't stop there. So then I was going to order today again. Um, I don't know if he told you. <laughs> I, I don't went, even know the story. I went. To, I sent you the text earlier. A lot of the shit's not in. There's no bread. There's no milk. There's no eggs. I'm like, well, what the hell? The new there's uh, nothing in the new COVID was, shutdown is among us. There was nothing in at that Walmart, so I actually opened a second Walmart account now. Oh my god! So I have two, so I have two Walmart accounts that have that have delivery, and uh, I have one where I erase your address, and I put one with your with your address in it. So, so it has your name on it, Ben Temple, with my payment information on it, and my and uh, your phone number on it. This is uh, I was, but I I was going to order today, but it wouldn't let me order because there was I knew I could have ordered still, but there was nothing that I wanted to get in stock. There was like, like I'll I'll be fine. There's one or two things items that one or two items that aren't in stock. But there was there was no bread, no Italian bread, no milk, 
no jumbo eggs. There were no pop tarts in, and I'm so I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll wait. That's that's bizarre. It must be like I wonder if it's like a certain time of the week they're more stocked for the delivery items than other times. I don't know. I mean, but that first order I placed with you was honestly the first order I ever placed with Walmart where everything was in stock. Oh, okay. Yeah, like when I place orders for me, like I may, I may, uh, I'll get like shrimp for the cats. I feed them shrimp and tuna and salmon, and they'll sometimes substitute or something wasn't in, and they'll say this wasn't in. Like I, I one time I ordered from from my Walmart, I ordered one hundred sixty eight dollars in groceries, and I got a text saying some items weren't in. So I looked at the final order, and it was nine dollars. So it was like a hundred and fifty <laughs> something dollars. That was, so I said, yeah, cancel this shit. You ordered one hundred sixty, one hundred seventy dollars in groceries, you're sending nine dollars and shit. That's a, like I know on Instacart when I order stuff like if I'm, you know, wants to get some from Publix or something and I'm I just want to have like I've taken advantage of like free delivery offers and stuff. Just try them out. Uh, they're always like either either the person doing the shopping messages me if something's not in to ask if I want something similar, but never like yeah, they don't, they don't, never they just, don't do that at Walmart. Yeah, that's weird. Well, they don't do that, but they, they do. They will have substitutions. Like if you try to get. um bunch of bowls and they're in, they'll send you whatever the other brand is. But the one thing that Walmart will do is they will upgrade you and still charge you a lower price. So if you're right. getting like uh if you're getting like uh brand crappy brand turkey and it's not in but they have boar's head, they'll send you the boar's head and still charge you the crappy brand price. Yeah, that's that's good at least. You know yeah, so. what's I was gonna say it it was very satisfying for you to get a taste of your own medicine, but then I'm like <laughs> But but then I'm like, God damn it! But now he knows it works. Like the food's in the house, <laughs> and you eat it. So now, oh, I know. so now I'm like, I'm I I feel like I'm fucked. Like I'm never yeah. gonna stay on a diet because once I'm coasting for like twelve days, some fucking you know thirty dollars <laughs> worth of pop tarts are gonna show up under my. Well, you know, actually, they do have a nice. They do have a new thing. As I was looking today, it was out of stock. That's why I couldn't get it. They have a new. Uh... Fifteen dollar pack of pop tarts that has eighty pop tarts oh, in it. Oh my oh. god! Is it, oh my god! It's a variety pack. It has, has every flavor. It has like ten of every flavor or something. See, and the fuck. Well, the... See, they, they say the, they say the key to a diet is if you can get past the three week three week mark, twenty one days, <laughs> then you will succeed. So what I'll do is I'll wait till around nineteen days, and then I'll send groceries over. <laughs> see, I should I should like pretend like I haven't started my diet for like a good week and a half. And oh, then... I don't, you don't need to. I don't, I don't even pay attention to that. Genetti calls me and says, "Then we're on." Genetti called me and say, "Oh, we have a competition. We'll, we'll see who can lose more weight. Send him food." <laughs> <laughs> he does. Oh no! I, think, I, I tried Walmart one time ordering, and the order was fine except for I asked for a green pepper and they gave me an avocado. <laughs> and when I yeah, when I called, I, I called and said, "Hey!" And the lady said, "The kid just didn't know the difference between an avocado and a green pepper." I was yeah. like, "How does he not know the difference of that?" He's not Italian. I the peaches they sent me know. tangerines. I ordered peaches they sent tangerines once. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it just depends if you get who you get. And you can't never call there because they never answer. I don't know how you got them. They never answer the phone. Yeah. No, they did it this one, but she 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 said he must have just been confused. Yeah. So you will you will be getting another another delivery though. Oh dear when, lord. Uh, when I believe there's adequate, when I believe there's adequate items that I like. See, you know what I do too. I'm living. I was living vicariously through you. I sent all the foods to you that I would like. Like these are all foods. Oh, these are good foods. I like Uncrustables. Let me get these. Oh my I god. Like, I like everything bagels with cream cheese. Let me. That's actually what I eat for breakfast every day. I eat everything bagel with toasted with cream cheese and like six strips of bacon. That's I my breakfast. I can't even be that mad because <laughs> every it's like everything I liked. There was it wasn't like oh he ordered a bunch of stuff I'll never eat. It was like yeah, no. everything I liked. I mean, White Castle burgers? Are you kidding oh, yeah, me? Get those. Are you yeah, fucking get those. kidding me? Right. And the donuts? Key is, Are you kidding me? Listen, and the key is I got the hamburgers, not the cheeseburgers, because the cheeseburgers that, that you can't microwave them because you cook them. You have to cook them long enough so the burger cooks, but then the cheese gets burnt. So. Oh my friend, I found a way to make them cheeseburgers. Don't you worry. You got to <laughs> you 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 take the cheese off first. I, I cook not, them. I steam them in like a uh, here's here's I steam them in a, like a wet paper towel, and then yeah, immediately you know I, pull them out and throw that cheese under and close the close back up and it melts before I eat it. You know it's it's yeah, but I I have a better way to make them now because what I do is I just order actual <laughs> White Castle from Uber Eats because we have White Castle here. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. yeah, you yeah, do yeah, have it there. Yeah, that's... yeah. yeah. But yeah, you will be getting an order this week maybe. Uh, once they restock Jesus. an adequate supply, Dear I feel Lord, this I'm, is great. I'm so you, listen, so you, know, you know that you know that five pound candy bar I gave you. <laughs> so no, listen, what I'm doing? I just, I just ordered six of them. I ordered six of them from Amazon. Okay, 
and uh, I ordered six of them to have, have them delivered uh, next month. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them out to trick-or-treaters at random times who I feel like I want to give this, this kid a five-pound candy bar. Like, <laughs> like just random or maybe like best costumes or something? Uh, like yeah, like, yeah, like if I see a, a costume I like, yeah, or if I see like a, like a brother and sister that come up, I, I may give him like here, you know, give him like a huge candy bar you, in his bag or whatever. You should film those reactions. They're probably yeah. I'm gonna try and get someone to film it because it'd yeah. be hilarious to see yeah. the kid. Well, see, normally what I give out for Halloween anyway, I, I each, each kid gets two items. They get a uh, king size pack of Twizzlers, which is the the big wow. jumbo. Like it's like a uh, 16 ounces of Twizzlers, and then a full size um bar of uh, Star uh, Starburst Reds only. Where were you when I was a kid? Jesus, this is like <laughs> this is like all the hot teachers that fucked the students. Where were they when I was a kid? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, oh uh, speaking of, speaking of speaking of those hot ones, did I ever tell you the story about Brandy? <laughs> Here we go. We talked. We talked about this. So let's yeah, move we on. Did, we this. did. I I, I I actually I have a list of a few items that over the yeah course, these are important over the course okay. of these podcasts when we randomly have you on. Um, okay. that I'd like to tackle one at a time. Um, okay. So you, I, I'm going to l- read these three, and you tell me which one you want to tell me about. I've got okay. the People's Court. Yeah. <laughs> which, which time? I, I did it twice. That one. I did it twice. Oh, well, then we have two People's Court stories. Um, yeah. uh, the time you uh, made an offer to cut your pinky off if, uh, as, a, as like the loser of a wrestling match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, the time you auctioned one of your kidneys on eBay. Okay, well, we can hold off on the People's Court one, because I actually did People's Court. I did Judge du- Judge Judy also. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And I just did a new show called Relative Justice, like, two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it, hasn't, it hasn't aired yet. Uh, I, did that, I did that show with Les Adams, Loverboy Les Adams. Oh, my God. You got to um, let us know my, when that's as airing. As my cousin. Yeah, as my cousin. I'll find out what it airs. So I, I also did Rolanda, Marilyn Keegan, Richard Bay. I did uh, Sally, Jesse, Raphael with Soul Man, Alex G. Oh, my God. Oh, that was a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, I did um, Jerry Springer twice. Yeah, so I've done a bunch of shows. Um, but the kidney thing, we'll talk another time. I'll, dig, I'll give you the finger story today since tomorrow is a, is a wrestling anniversary for me. So we'll do the finger one. <laughs> so this is around the time when ECW first got pay-per-view and the hardcore – Craig was, was kicking across, you know, the industry. Right. I started That's doing. For those who don't know, hold on, because a lot of people don't watch wrestling. Who listen? ECW was like hardcore wrestling, like it was like violent and nudity and like women taking pile drivers. It was insane. Well, the East is for extreme. There's extreme right. wrestling. And I was doing this stuff at the same time. Like I would go through tables, you know, on, on shows, and there wasn't a lot of guys that would do that style down there. In fact, a little sub story was. With Rusty Brooks, when he was running a show, I, I did a, a, a table bump on one of the shows he was running. He chewed me out in the locker room. God damn it, Rogers, the Marquis says wrestling, not the fucking furniture wars. <laughs> and um, so I did the spot, and the spot got over so huge. Pop, it was a pop of the night. And then I said, I thought to myself, well, I'm off his shows. You know, he's not going to book me again. But I got a call two nights later from Rusty. He's like, hey, Bobby, it's Rusty. If you want to bring a table and do that spot with me uh, on the other <laughs> show. Because <laughs> it, was, it was, you know, the business was changing at the time. And one thing Buddy Rogers taught me, you know, was to evolve with the business. If you didn't evolve with the business or anything, any business, anything in life, you will become obsolete and left behind. Like, Buddy didn't Latin like the fact that Ric Flair won the WWE title in a Royal Rumble. He hated that, but he understood that times were changing, you know, in my day, a suplex was a finish, but right. anyway, so when ECW got pay-per-view, I was trying to think of, um, Hey, Mike, I'm getting a call. Wait, it says, uh, it says potential spam, but don't worry, Janetti. It doesn't mean it's food. It's just a, a, a <laughs> like a spam caller. <laughs> so, so, um, Jesus. So I figured, what could I do? You know, that would be extreme. That could get me like, elevate me to the next level that they're, that they're at. So ECW had a show at War Memorial, and I was helping Paul Heyman book some of the, in, uh, in the ring. La- in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. I helped, I helped Heyman book the ring and some other stuff. I actually had contacts at the time. And um, and so I uh, showed up to, to the show, and I, I was talking in the back, and I said, Hey, Paul, I've got a great idea for an angle for your you know your extreme pay-per-views and all the other stuff you're doing. So oh, tell me about it. So I said, All right, it's, it's called like an appendage match or a finger match. It was kind of based on the – the Halloween horror where they spin the wheel, make a deal thing. 
I said, you get right. a guy to come into the territory, and he jumps someone on TV, like uh, like Mick Foley, or he jumps Terry Funk, because those guys are both there at the time. And, uh, and I said, and like, that guy is me. And I go to cut off one of their fingers with a cigar cutter, which is the gimmick from the movie Dark Man, the guy who used to cut their fingers off and collect fingers. Yeah, you, you know, you put the guy's like a little case or something. I remember that. Right, you put the guy's finger in the cigar hunter, in the cigar cutter, and you're going to cut it. But then he stops you, and the security stops you. Uh, and then you do the big revenge match. It's a, it's an appendage match where you um spin the wheel and you cut off an appendage. Where, you know, you loser cuts an appendage off. I said, and you spin the wheel and you gimmick the wheel to spin, or you just say it's to loser cuts off their left pinky finger. He goes, okay, all right, tell me more. How do you how do you gimmick it? I said, well, you just gimmick the wheel. No, how do you gimmick it? So you know you you don't cut off the finger. I said, oh, you don't. He goes, what do you mean you don't? I said, I said, well, I'll put the guy over, and you just, you know, put some Novocaine on my hand and just, you know, chop off the finger in the ring. But I want a contract that says I can keep the finger, and I'll get it bronzed afterwards, and I'll use it, like, in my trunks. I'll pull it out and jab the guy in the neck with it or poke him in the eyes. And, you know, they, you, know you, could, you could win a title, and the guys and the referee wants to disqualify you, but you can't. It's technically it's a part of my body, you know. And, uh, and so he said, oh, he said, okay, all right. Uh, yeah, we'll think about that as he's backing away, slowly backing away. And, um, and then he never took my calls after that. <laughs> <laughs> but see now, now we booked Terry Funk like, uh, three years, three or four years later, the first time in the table match, we did the table match and, um, and Terry, uh, the booker, it wasn't my show. It was for OCW it was Flex Armstrong. I was booking, I was booking the shows for him. So he comes and says, uh, Hey, uh, Bobby, Hey, Bobby, Terry wants to talk to you. So I, I said, oh, fuck, he doesn't want to do this match. Because it was a 10-man table death match. You had to put a guy through a table, and then once you're through a table, it's like a, like a Royal Rumble, except you're putting a guy through a table. Right. In so I figured, yeah. shit, he's going to tell me he doesn't want to do this match with a bunch of local guys. So uh, I'm trying to figure So I go to talk to him. I get in the back, and Terry says, Bobby Rogers, they <laughs> tell me you're the fellow that wanted to cut off his left pinky finger in a match with me. I said, uh, yeah, uh, I did. So he's he's thinking, he's looking at me, going, hmm, huh. He goes, come closer, let me see your finger. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, <laughs> this guy's going to break my finger. He's going to break my finger and tell me I have no respect for the business. I said, well, whatever, I'll let Terry Funk break my finger. So I walk up to him, he says, show me which finger. And I show him my, my pinky finger. And I tell him, I, you know, I, you know, I, I put it, I tied it down with rubber band for like four days. So I really didn't need it, you know, to see like I live without it. And so he, he, he takes my pinky finger and he's turning my hand all around. He's looking at it. I'm waiting for him to break my finger and tell me I have no respect. And then he just lets my hand go. And he looks at me, he goes, Bobby, he goes, that is one hell of a fucking angle. He goes, and I will tell you right now, if I was 20 years younger, I would steal that idea from you and I would do it myself in Japan. Oh, wow. But if I were to do that shit now, my wife would never have me again. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked. So after I booked him a few more times, we booked my FOW shows. And I told him, I said, you know, I'm serious. I would do that for real. I said, uh, <laughs> especially in Japan, you know, that's where it would be huge money. So um, we, he had someone look into it, and um, wow. there were lawyers that got in, there were lawyers that got involved, and they were looking into it, and. Um, we had uh, we had someone on the hook who wanted to do the match over there in Japan, where it would have been me and Terry Funk, the loser loses the finger, and especially in Japan, it's a big deal. As it turns out, I didn't know this, but the left pinky finger is like a thing of honor. The yakuza cut it off instead of killing you or something. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, things. yeah. Yeah, it's like a thing wow. of honor. So it would have been really, really huge over there. But then it turned out that um, uh, I would have to stay there forever. I would never be able to come back to the United States. Because the lawyers uh, and stuff that looked into it said that if I did that, then when I came back, anybody who wanted to jump on the bandwagon and the fame could have me Baker acted um, for a psychiatric evaluation, for mutilating my body, you know, and all this whole nine yards. It would be a big mess. And then the then the promotion backed out of doing it when they found that out. So, Wow. I, Damn. Can't, so, I didn't realize that it was actually like that in the works. That's... Yeah, well, I actually, I actually even mentioned it the other day because, you know, I heard Tommy Dreamer got a kick out of it. And um and Dreamer posted something on his Facebook page the other day about how uh, Terry Funk is is uh is doing better health wise than um a lot of people think he is that he spoke to him and uh, Terry made a comment to him saying hey we should think of an angle to capitalize on all his publicity so I replied and said hey the Bobby Rogers finger angle is still a possibility. <laughs> <laughs>
that must have that must have been really validating when he when he decided not to break a finger and said it was a, a hell of an angle. Yeah, I I thought he was gonna. I really thought he was gonna snap my finger and or you know I, I went from thinking he was gonna tell me he's not doing the match to not want to do the you know. But we did. I, he, Terry was great to work with. He we did a lot of a lot of crazy matches. We did a bloody royal, which was a battle royal where instead of over the top rope you had to be busted open. And so when a guy like Terry Funk comes in and says, "Yeah, I'll do that with twenty other guys." You know, it was that he doesn't even know that we're like a local independent guy in Florida. That was, you know, it was really good. So it was a like a last man bleeding match. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of crazy matches in FOW. I did the Baker's Dozen Lumberjack match where I put thirteen guys in ringside with frying pans and and rolling pins and the ten man table death match, which was also a thirty man table death match, and the Bloody Royal thing. We had a lot of a lot of crazy matches. You had a first the first Bud match I told you about last time with Flex Magnum. That's where you had to, you had to drink uh, the first Bud match, where you had to drink your six beers, and, and uh, you had Speed Bike and, and Flex, and Flex would, we gave Flex real beer though, <laughs> and, um, and and Flex would chug Flex would chug a beer, you'd chug a six pack, and then you know before your opponent did, so Flex would drink a beer, and then me and Mike would go over and switch it out, put one of his beers and Flex's, so Flex went up drinking twelve beers in like eight minutes. Oh my god! Yeah, so I, I did I did face Flex Magnum. In a uh, drinking contest one time at, at a party at Fabulous Frank's, um, we, we were doing shots, except um, he was drinking vodka and I was drinking Zephyr Hills. <laughs> so I, I won, and then you know, he went outside to piss, and he actually fell backwards through Frank's screen and took a bump through the screen, broke the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. There was a, so. he, got, he got super drunk. One night at Supercon, I think. Oh yeah, Anthony, that was when that was the show when, um, like Xavier Woods and right uh, was there, and Ricardo Rodriguez was there, yeah. and uh, a bunch of those guys, and I think uh, Vendette and his brother uh, had like a big bottle of like Jack or something, and uh, yeah. Flex and 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 uh, Ricardo and those guys were just chugging it. While the show's going on, and uh, then later that night, that whole ballroom area where where our section of the wrestling is in, um, the rest of it became like a like a dance rave kind of thing, and so we stick around. Uh, whoop, we stick around just to make sure no one fucks up our area. Uh, and man, uh, Flex was so drunk; he was storming through there like Godzilla. He not anything. That was composed of pipe and drape for like a a good like uh I don't know three hundred feet got knocked over in his rampage. We had to rebuild. He, he we got had to rebuild everything. He got really drunk in Peru, Flex Magnum, and um, <laughs> and he was so drunk that he thought the prostitute really liked him. I guess, or he didn't realize she was a prostitute. She was in the massage parlor, and <laughs> the happy ending was all inclusive. Um, over there, and, and it was like ten dollars American because that was like that was like four hundred dollars Peruvian. It was like forty to one, so that was like four hundred Peruvian dollars. So it was ten dollars American. So Jeez. Flex figured he, he did the massage for ten dollars, and that she fell in love with him because he came out. He came in the at the uh, in the hotel afterwards, bragging how uh, she liked him so much that she let she let him uh, go down on her and eat her out. And of course, and of course, Dennis oh. Allen. Of course, that was just after Dennis Allen got done fucking her. But <laughs> God, oh, not Dennis Allen, Marshall Law, I think, or the Postman. What are those guys? Oh my God. Oh my God. That's yeah, brutal. yeah. So Good old Flex. Yeah. Poor Flex. Yeah. So, so Flex was yeah. And when when Flex got drunk at Frank's place, I told you he was taking a piss outside near the canal, and he stumbled back and forth the screen. And when he fell back, he's, his dick was still hanging out of his zipper. <laughs> so I forget, I forget who it was, but we made one of the students from FOW school go out and put Flex's dick back in his pants. <laughs> Lucky he didn't have a Franks and Beans incident there. <laughs> <laughs> and Flex was knocked out, so he was there. And then, and then uh, of course, Frank was upset because Flex vomited on his new carpet. So I, I just... <laughs> so I shaved off half of Flex's must, like the left half of his mustache and the right oh eyebrow. Oh, my God. While he was sleeping, and he went to work the next day at the glass. At the glass, he worked for DV Glass at the time, and he said everyone was asking him, like, like making fun of him, saying he looks so weird. He didn't know. He didn't know the whole day that he was missing one eyebrow and half a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's that's yeah. that's, wow. that's good rib when <laughs> when coworkers uh, that you don't even know or keep it going the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't let, we wouldn't let him drive home because we knew he was he was beyond drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, he thought he thought he was beating me. He he was trying to beat me in that drinking contest because I was I was working you. I was drunk, but I don't drink alcohol, so I was just drinking Zephyr Hills. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought uh, I was drinking his vodka. I I remember one of the first Bud matches. That flex was in it. Was that what was that small building? In I think it was in um, American Legion. Yeah, and we, put, we always put flex in the butt in the first butt match. Always. Right, and I, I don't think I was uh, at the time. I don't believe I was on the shows. I was just there watching because I was training. And uh, you never did finish. Who training? Oh no! <laughs> uh, but I remember flex being like absolutely hammered, and whoever yeah, he was working that night was like. Not even drinking the he would go to take the shot and like throw it over his shoulder. And Flex was had no clue this was happening. And he's like pounding him down and he was hammered. Yeah, because we kept we always would we always would give him real beer. We would tell him it was O'Doul's or it was right. it was it was ginger ale or something and, and then we'd give him real beer and then we'd switch his his and once he drank out with new fresh ones. And he and he never like like he, he had like <laughs> so he, he drank like two and he put one back. That's funny. And, and we'd have if Bruce was the referee we'd have Bruce, you know, Hurry him up to um, Drake and hurry up. We gotta take it home. We gotta take it home, brother. Go ahead and chug it. Chug it. <laughs> yeah. God. It, yeah, it, how, many, how many Bruce stories do you have? That's the uh, question. Well, the people score. I did people score with Bruce. Oh. <laughs> now, I won't tell the people score story, but I will tell a sub story from that. We were in New York to do people score. So we went to, um, uh, what was the Howard Stern strip club he promoted all the time? Scores. Scores. Scores, yeah. That yeah. Was it. So um, Bruce, Bruce tells me, you know, with the hotel, he goes, hey, hey, Rogers, hey, uh, they got that uh, club over there, Scores, you know, the one uh, Stern promotes, you know, let's, let's go over there. <laughs> I said, well, Bruce, you know, I said, strip clubs aren't really my thing. I'm not going to go there and spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars. You know, he goes, come on, I got you covered. I got you covered. I'll, I'll get the cover charge and I'll, I'll buy you a few drinks. I don't drink and I don't drink alcohol. So um, we go over there and the cover charge is like, I think it was $75 to get in. Oh, my Whew. God. And um, back and then, Bruce, Jesus. Ooh. Well, actually, actually, I mean, actually, first we were in the hotel room. Bruce, Bruce had a lot of cash on him, you know, because um, Bruce, Bruce made good money. Um, he, he was like an AV, uh, worked for an aviation company. He had no children, you know, and um, so he he had a lot of expendable income. So he pulled out a lot of cash and he's counting his money at the table in the hotel room, and he had like four grand on him in cash. So we go over to the um, we go over to the, the scores. He buys us in, you know, da da da. He buys me a lap dance. Uh, he has. He buys the champagne room lap dance. He's, he's tipping like crazy. We were there for about um, two hours, and then um, we we're walking back to the hotel. And he goes, "I gotta stop at the ATM and eat cash so I can get something to eat." What? <laughs> he spent <laughs> four grand. Wow! Holy In shit! In two hours, That's, two and a half hours. Wow. Hours. Yeah, two hours on lap dances and and um and cover. I mean, cover charge was like it was only two hundred bucks of drinks, and it was a like two drink minimum or something. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, holy that's shit! It. But yeah, yes, that's that's oddly enough. I, I mean, I I occasionally drank alcohol at FOW once in a while, but a lot of times I wasn't really drinking. A lot of some guys would think I was drinking, and I wasn't. But um, that did happen once with WWF, where uh, Pat Patterson thought I was drinking when he tried to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Me, me and let's close with this. <laughs> me, me and Blair went to a, a WWF show in Fort Myers to see Tatanka make his debut. For the fortieth time, you know, <laughs> every city, every city Tatanka went to was his his debut match. So we went to see there, and um, Chris was fairly new to the company, so he didn't get his itinerary yet. He didn't know which hotel he was staying at. So he said, "It's either this hotel or that hotel. One hotel has office staff, one hotel has talent. He doesn't know which one he's at." So we just picked one of the hotels, and as it turns out, we picked the wrong one. We picked the one with the office staff. So me and Blair went into the bar. And um, we were drinking, and at the bar was uh, McMahon was there, and um, Mel Phillips was there, and Terry Garvin, and Pat Patterson. This is before all the homosexual stories came out about these guys. Um, <laughs> you know, about Mel Phillips wanting to suck on the ring, ring boy's feet and all this other stuff. Yeah. So um, so we said, oh, we're at the wrong hotel, so we'll have, to, we'll have to leave. And we have to leave, and the bartender brings drinks over to us. And we were just drinking soda. We weren't drinking alcohol because Blair was driving and I don't drink. So um, we said, okay. And we drank those and then we weren't even done with those and more came over and then more came over. Like we had, we had like six, somewhere like six to eight drinks. So he's buying you, like, he's buying you rounds of sodas. 
Yeah, but I don't think he knew this. He right, probably right, right. said, "No, no, no." I know, of course. Yeah, right. He probably just said, "Send them another. Send them whatever they're drinking." Right. I assume he didn't know we were right. we were drinking Coke, you know. And the bartender didn't didn't tell them, you know, we were drinking just soda because the bartender wants to sell the drinks. Right. So, um, so uh, we get and keep in mind at the time Blair and I were looked like two pretty boys with the long blonde, bleach blonde hair, you know, clean shaven, shaved arms, legs, shaved chest, everything. We we're mm-hmm. smooth, you know. <laughs> so, um, we got to leave, and as we're getting up to leave. Pat Patterson approaches us and says, "Hey guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the drinks. They're for, they're for me and Terry and Mel. <laughs> Those the three fruitcakes sent us the drinks. <laughs> so, um, so I we said, oh, thank you so much. I didn't tell him we weren't drinking, and um, I said, yeah, we, we had enough though. And um, he said, well, we're gonna have a party down by the down by the uh, down by the lake. You want you guys want to come? I said, oh, well, you know, let, we I, I had a suit on, I had a shirt and tie. I said, well, that's fine. Let's go upstairs. We'll, Put our bathing suits on and we'll, we'll come down. Oh, great, great, great. We, we can't look forward to seeing you. So we went to the room and, and Blair's like, I ain't going to that fucking party. They're trying to pick us up. <laughs> I, said, I said, what are you talking about? They're not trying to pick us up. I said, I said that's the office, guys. I said, I said, let's go down there. Let them, you know, tell them about our gimmick and stuff and all this other thing. And and uh, he's like, no, they're trying to pick us up. So I called Lenny Burstein, who used to work with Terry Garvin and, and those guys. Right. And I said, I said, what do you know about Terry Garvin? Oh, he works for WB. He he does the draws. He does the payroll. You know, talent. I said, okay. He says, why? I said, because Blair thinks he's trying to pick us up. He goes, oh yeah, he's gay. <laughs> I said, okay. So I guess we're not going to go to the party. So I actually, I actually grabbed some uh, hotel stationery and I started writing a love letter to Pat Patterson and Terry Garvin from from Blair. <laughs> and um, and and I told Blair, I said, I'm going to get us in the fucking. I'm going to get us to try it with WWF. You'll see. And so um, he's like, what are you gonna do? I said, just read a letter. So he's reading letters like. Um, I'm sorry I was so drunk from the drinks, and uh, but I do want to hook up with you and, and meet you, and I, I like older guys. I have daddy issues. He's like, oh, my God, you can't send this. And it says, love Blair Rogers, not Bobby. <laughs> so he's like, ha, ha, very funny. Give me the letter. I'm going to rip it up. I said, no. I said, as soon as you fall asleep, I'm going to go put this under his door. Blair, <laughs> Blair sat against the door that night. And he, moved the, he moved the chair against the door and slept in the chair against the door so I couldn't get out and give it to <laughs> so one the moral of the story is that you will cut a pinky off, but you won't <laughs> let someone finger you like a bowling ball. <laughs> well, no, I would have had Blair to do that. <laughs> I would have had Blair to do that. But now the, the, here's, here's, here's another funny thing: is this was about six months before the Beverly Brothers showed up. Six months later, the Beverly Brothers showed up. Oh, the two, the two blonde brothers. Yeah. So I had a chance to work for work for them as uh, to fill in on a show one uh, one time where uh, there was a matinee show in, in West Palm Beach and I went to see Tatanka again um, and um, it was Chris Chavis and uh, I guess it was a matinee show and someone didn't show up to, from the flight the night before so there was like eight guys were not there and um, they offered me a spot to as a as Bobby I would I would have been Bobby Beverly because the Beverly brothers weren't there I would have teamed wow. with um, the Beverlys and Poffo. And I would have had a singles match with Virgil, <laughs> um, oh. but I did not bring. I didn't, I didn't have my gear there. You know, they always say bring your gear, but who expects to bring a gear to a WWE yeah. show when you're yeah. when you're you know 19 years old? <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah. one time, one time, I got called uh, on the spot by Hassan, your your good friend there, and Hassan yeah. said, MVP. "Hey, Tommy MVP Dreamer for people." That MVP know. said, "I need you." I need, Tommy Dreamer said he needs a guy. For uh for something to do during the Royal Rumble, and I said, oh okay. He goes, he wants to know how much you weigh. I said, oh about two thirty. Tommy Dreamer said he's too fat. They hung up the phone on me. I didn't get the chance. <laughs> <laughs> and that wow, was the end of that. That's been a thread running through your whole life here. <laughs> right. I was like, what just happened? He's like, and I texted him, and he's like, he said you're too fat. We have to move on. <laughs> I was like, unfucking believable. <laughs> <laughs> too fat. They ended up using Scott Commodity, so. Oh. Uh, who who weighed 240? <laughs> <laughs> but he lied. The difference is he lied about it. He was smart enough. Right, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought they wanted ha- I was. I honestly wasn't even 230 at the time. I was just trying to make it like I was beefed up. For, right, right. You know, yeah. They wanted a skinny guy, not a fat guy. Mm-hmm. What was the spot? What do you do? Uh, I have something in like a something during the Royal Rumble where pull apart or something, but they they couldn't have a bigger guy. They needed a smaller guy because they made the, the whoever was in the spot look too small. So right. they wanted smaller guy, skinnier guy, or whatever. But right, 
Yeah. 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 Well, well next I, time, it, next time, time, probably, I'll tell you, so. I'll tell you the, uh, the, uh, kidney story or the people's core story, the, whatever. I think the kidney story has to be told because that's like a, that's like a change that changed something in the, <laughs> the world, basically. No, no, he created, I, I listen, he created eBay policy. I think, yeah. right. I, well, I think I also put eBay on the map. It gave him a lot of publicity. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That's true. Yeah. It's one of those uh, human so commodity time. stories for sure. Anyway, it's been a, it's been a question on Final Jeopardy, so. <laughs> well, that's Which all right. That's that's so, yeah, right. Final Jeopardy is like not even regular. That's a real achievement. Like anyone, can, <laughs> anyone could be and a question Bart's, on Jeopardy. And Bart Simpson wrote on the chalkboard one day on one of the Simpson shows, and it was in the Jay Leno monologue. Oh, Letter wow. and everybody. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a whole theme of a whole Drew Carey show episode. That that uh that pebble created some ripples for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll be the story next time. That's that's a nice yeah, love story. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. All right, cool guys. All right, Bobby. Thank you for uh, taking right. my call. That was uh that was some no good problem. stuff there. <laughs> All right. All right, oh, guys. So long. Take All care, right. man. Bye. Thank you. Did he? Okay. Uh, yeah. Listen, man. I, I don't know if We're I can food. deal with all this food coming. I really. This is great. I'm really. <laughs> I'm, I really need to start working on myself. <laughs> I can't have, I can't have eighty. Walking. I can't have eighty pop tarts show up at my door at some random day. Eighty, eighty pop tarts. Oh my god. Oh, this is so funny. This is bad. This is bad. Well, this is. It's gonna be a good week. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantee it's coming this week. Hey, you know what? Look, it's nice and warm up here at two seventy. I'll hold the spot for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Although we'll never know because you won't get on a scale. So. Oh, I'm gonna have to at some point because because this living in denial, this like this it's wake, not working. This like yeah, it's like a it's like a, a waking death. I just, I know I know I know, <laughs> but until I confirm it with like an actual like you know seeing is believing kind of thing. You know, because because right after that wedding, it's been back to elastic shorts every day. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, it's just getting harder to wipe my own ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> good oh, stuff. Oh, I'm trying to reach around that love handle. All right. Well, uh, all right. That was a good podcast. Yeah, I like when someone else does the heavy lifting for us. Right. We didn't have to do anything this week. <laughs> we got to have more guests. God damn it. Right. Right. <laughs> Oh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call Billy on Thursday. <laughs> uh, All right, no, buddy. we're done. With we're done with Billy. We don't need to call him. <laughs> Look, he forgot already. Let's move oh on. my god! Us. Listen, every time, <laughs> every time Bobby tags him in something, he goes on a fucking rampage about you and me. Wait, like today? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. did I? What right. did I? I ratted you out on something to him too. What, right, I what think was, you did. And what was that? I forget what that was, though. It was something. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but you ratted me out. Oh, and... I saw, oh, I know what it was. <laughs> you did a TikTok. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Where you a were burrito in bed. You were laying in bed eating a burrito at like midnight. <laughs> yeah. I you said it to out. him. He he went off the handle. <laughs> he did. He did. He was so mad. Oh so my mad. god. Oh, We're going to have a backyard oh. match in Atlanta. He's going to just show up and beat your ass. <laughs> He's going to break your jaw so you can't chew food for three months. Uh, no, he said if I hit 280, I am not 280. I'm still 270. Listen, he may just he may just decide to slide that. Uh, well, slide that here we go. This, this is, I'm going to end it on this. Uh -huh. I'm 270. I'm not 280. But I just made, I just made a, a real burrito, chicken. Sour cream, yeah. lettuce, cheese. Don't, don't think I didn't hear you what? fucking banging listen, shit around peppers. the whole time Bobby was talking. Onions. Listen, though. I just made this nice, nice burrito. Onions, peppers, uh, the whole the whole tomato, like salsa, whole, the whole deal. I just rolled this burrito, and I went to go eat it, and I said, no, no. I am now putting cheese on top of it and melting cheese on top of the burrito. What, are you baking it in the oven or something? Yeah, but look, this is how we do it. 280 right here. Here we go. <laughs> All right, I got to go eat. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.
I think that's the close of every episode now. I got to go eat goodbye. It doesn't matter if you say it or I say it. It, yeah. it tracks either way. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, fat fuck. I'll talk right, to you goodbye. later. Bye. Bye.